Hello, welcome back to Friendly Fire. I am this host on this side. My name is Sam. And I'm the host on the other side. My name is Thomas Delzey. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be talking about employment today and our crazy stories that we have while being an employee right after the intro. You're fired! Hello, welcome back. We are here with some really great employees today. I think, maybe. <laughs> I would say, I'm, my, hi, I'm Natalie. And I, hi, I'm Kayla. Awesome, all right. Does anyone have any particularly uh, inspiring stories they want to start us off with? Or? I'd just like to remind everyone of the, right at the top of the show that apparently we'd like to remind everyone that this show is in fact produced at uh, KMOS yes. PBS. Yes, KMOS PBS. Um, yes. That is why we do this. So we are um, currently employed. Yeah. Are we, or are we not? <gasps> You'll never know. It's a miracle we haven't been taken off there yet. <laughs> Honestly. I know. One of these days, it'll be the last one. <laughs> one of these, these days. days. It'll be like, no more. <laughs> no, no more. <laughs> okay. Um, any interesting stories that you guys can think of? Um, I have so many. Where do you want to start? I can start. start with a light one. Start with a light one. Okay. okay. Kayla, Kayla um, starts warmed off. Up. This is from like my most recent like retailist job, because over this past summer, I worked at a local grocery store, and mm -hmm. I was a cashier. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. honestly... I don't have any bad stories from there. I actually really enjoyed it, my manager and stuff. But what happened that was funny was once I was just minding my own business. It was like during Memorial Day, so everyone's trying to get all the food oh, for that. It's always busy. Exactly. And so I'm standing there at the cash register trying to just ignore life, and someone walks around the corner from an aisle that I'm facing, and right, he stares right, right. at me. And at the same time, he's, he's both like has this purposeful stride, but he's barely moving. And he <laughs> stops, and he looks at me, and he's like, he just doesn't even... He doesn't ask me this. He just looks at me and he goes, hot dog buns. <laughs> and I'm just like. Hot, I, I'm just like. That's something that you would do, I think. I think you would just go up to someone and ask for hot dog buns in that like exact. Like specifically. Uh, that. Way of saying that. And I'm just like, they're over there. And he's like, and he doesn't even say anything else. He continues with, like, the, I'm serious when I say, like, he had the most purposeful stride, but he was moving so <laughs> slow. And this guy was, like, maybe 30? I don't know. Okay. I mean, maybe he was so, on something. And that's I it. I, really have, I have a story kind of from the opposite side of that. Someone who's just giving, like, short bursts of command. So one of my jobs um, before this one was uh, serving uh, tables at a retirement home. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there was a server there who... There was this challenge that we called, um, just called drinks. Okay. Drinks question mark. Drinks? And so typically when you're a server, you go up and like, hi, you know, can you get you served with some drinks? And then you bring the drinks out. Hi, would you like, what yep. appetizers, what do you want? Uh, can I get your order? You bring stuff out. That kind of deal. The, the end of the game with drinks is you walk up to the table, you note pod drawn, and you just say, drinks? <laughs> They'll give you the drinks. Mm -hmm. You get and then their drinks. You bring the drinks back. You set it down. And then you don't say anything else to them for the rest of the time that they're there. Oh my god. <laughs> All you say is drinks, and then from the rest, you stand there with your notepad for as long as it takes them to notice that you're standing there. And at that point, they will just assume what you want to know and say it. Huh. Um, so a few things that are important to note is because it's a retirement home, it's the same people that we're seeing every single day. So it's kind of like a, a restaurant full of regulars, if you will. Okay. So they kind of know the whole rundown. They know the routine. It's not like you could potentially have people come in for the first time. I never tried the drinks challenge. I always wanted to. Wait, it's um, like a game that they were aware of? Or no, like, no, 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 no. This, this is something that only I think only a few people knew about. Mm -hmm. That uh, There was one guy who just did this because he was not a very good server. Um, but drinks? it was very funny. We all said, like, this, this would be the challenge. Is like, can you just get, can you win the drinks? You're like, can you win the drinks? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's that is really like funny. So when you said that sounds like, like something that I would do, it's very close to something that I've all wanted to do for a long time but never huh. got a chance to do. <laughs> well, um, I don't have much, really. I worked uh, retail for a while at a known retail place. And <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about where. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the only thing I have is um, this guy that I remember him very vividly to this day. Um, he came up to the counter, and it is late. I work later shifts, like closing shifts, because I'm younger. I'm in high school, and I'm allowed. Um, and this guy comes up with just like this massive cart full of bras, and. That's fine, but it is every size, every color, every type you could possibly think of. And it's just this 50, 60 year old guy buying them all. And he sits up on my counter and it's just like a pile of bras. And I don't know 
<laughs> and it's like 10 p.m. And I don't know why he's buying this many bras. <laughs> I figure I, I check him out. The 10 p.m. bra run? <laughs> like, yeah, he cleared out our entire clearance section of bras. <laughs> it was gone. So I, uh, yeah. Did he buy anything else? No. <laughs> that's all he bought. Would it be worse if he bought something else? Like he bought like... 30 bras and then like a box of Cheerios. <laughs> I don't know if that would be worse. But I ended up um, checking him out because it's just me. Like all of the, my coworkers are watching me check this guy out because nobody's there. It's late. We're closing soon. And I, he leaves. And I'm like, what was that? And apparently this is like a common occurrence where he comes in and clears out our clearance That's section Mr. of bras. Bra. <laughs> apparently he resells them online, which is oh, fine. That's okay. way better than what I thought it was. Yeah. But um, I had no idea what was going on the whole time and uh, yeah that was that's like the most vivid memory i have he's got that working. grind he's yeah. got a i mean if it if it works it works it's an I interesting market to corner especially for his own demographic that's what i'm saying know? like I, I don't know why he just decides yeah, i'm gonna clear out this store's entire clearance section of bras and hope that it sells but it's just it was just very startling and i was very taken aback the first time yeah. it happened that's i nice. only ever happened once when i worked there but how about you, Natalie? Have you had any work? Yeah, the only endeavors? time I remember, I also worked at a well-known retail store, and like the most vivid memory is just like one time this lady, like we were checking out or whatever, I was on the register, and then she pulls up this coupon from like 2010, and it's like, <laughs> oh, can I use this? And I was like, it's like 2020, bro. Like you can't use that. It's like a little 10 and years. And then she just like starts screaming in my face, oh, and she's just going crazy the worst. on me. I know. Whatever they're like, oh, can I use this oh, super old coupon? No, you can't. Like literally, it's like the barcode does not scan, bro. Like what do you want me to do? And then. And then the oh, managers always end up taking the customer side. They're like, oh, well, we can give it to them. And I, I was literally, literally. That's what they I, like, do. I was like, bro, I can't give you the coupon. And then I was like, I'm gonna get my manager. And then she was like, okay, I'll give you a coupon, bro. You made me fight with this lady for nothing. And then I, I was would, like, uh. I would just eat the coupon at that point. I'd just be like, <laughs> this is invalid by 10 years. <laughs> no, but she literally just Googled store coupons and then showed oh, really? me a Google image photo of a coupon, bro. Oh my God. I saw you I do respect that in my the face. grind no, for I working, no. but why? I don't respect yeah. you for doing it. No. Especially the managers. It always makes me so angry whenever they yeah. take mm -hmm. the customer because the customer is always right. Okay, yeah. that's not true. First in of fact, all, the, the customer is, the like customer the is always almost the most. always wrong. Yeah. I've been the customer who's wrong before. I yeah. can confirm. Customer is usually wrong. Customers don't know anything. They don't. It's like, it, I hate when they also try to tell you how to do your jobs. So they're like, well, this is how they do it at this store. This is how they do it over here. I'm like, well, unfortunately, we're take not your, at that store. And take you your wrong. business elsewhere. I work at a uh, franchise retail store. Franchise I, retail store. I'm not going to be directly affected if you take your $100 purchase of whatever you're buying somewhere else. Another if this were a small franchise business, store. maybe I'll be a little bit more upset. But the fact that I work at somewhere who's got, there, there's corporate involved. Nah. Yeah, like, no. I, oh no, we're going to lose one person out of the that million the other people who have gone through yeah. like, I you, will take, you are losing a valuable customer. And I'm like, I'm. Mm. No, it, I'm so scared. Frankly, you, I'm 17. I'm, honestly, I'm just doing this to buy a new game on my Xbox. I don't care that <laughs> like, much. Honestly, I just want to get a selection from the local gas station. That's all of the only reason I'm here for. I honestly could not care about <laughs> I got to fundraise leaving. for the next school <laughs> trip. You know, I, gotta I don't care that much. got to sell that chocolate bar. Yeah. <laughs> sell those chocolate bars you had to sell. I feel um, like as a result of like all those kinds of people, I feel like I overcompensate of being like, oh my god, you, thank I know. you for doing the job. I'm so sorry I exist in your store. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's always, you always feel so bad. It's like, oh, I'm sorry that I did things wrong. Every Especially time. when managers are super rude about it. You're like, oh, yeah. I'm sorry that I'm existing. Can you take it back a notch? Let's chill a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and then that's why every time I go to a store nowadays, if someone I'm comes so up to nice. me and they're like, oh, like. Anything I can do to help is like, no, not really. Like, enjoy your day. Like, yeah. don't perceive me. Uh, you, <laughs> no. you got enough on your plate. Go deal with you someone else. You don't need to know I'm struggling, okay? I will yeah. struggle on my own. Right. If um, I can't find what I'm looking for, I'll leave. Oh, literally. <laughs> I had to. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's, that's A little bit um, on the customer side. This happened literally this past weekend. Um, oh. I was in Branson, and I was shopping, and there was, we had a game store, and the box that I wanted to buy had was torn. And... Um, Cal's mom was like, you should go ask for a discount. So, you know what I did? I went and asked for a discount, and I felt like the scum of the earth. I walked up to that lady, I was like, hey, I hate doing this, the box is damaged. She's like, I can give you 10% off. And I was like, cool, thanks, I'm sorry. I ended up leaving, and I had to take a minute. I sat down for like five minutes after work, just like. 
So it seems to me like we've also had some, some pretty um, interesting work experience. But I hear that there's a new company that's looking to get even more people on the job. So if you're looking for a job with a new startup company, we have just the ad for you. Take it away. Here at Adblocker, we take non-traditional methods to keep your screens ad-free. <gasps> Our blockers are hard at work around the clock, watching a live feed from your devices, ready to strike when an ad appears. Gone are the days of interrupted watching on all platforms. We take pride in keeping your viewing pleasure undisturbed. <gasps> ad blocker, get blocked. And we are back. Looks so now like we got blocked. Yeah, it, I, I'm pretty sure that we've been uh, taken off air. At least the advertisement went. I'm but not you know, really. You too get sure. the idea. Hey, if you want to just sit and block ads for a while, it's a job. Could for be you. relaxing if you like staring at things. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, I've had pretty exclusively um, food service experience, yeah. mm -hmm. and to my knowledge, you're in the same. I mean, you've had yeah. some retail. I've had food service, technically customer service. Um, retail, and then I'm currently here as well. So yeah, I've been in all. I've dipped my toes in all the waters. You are so well-rounded. I refuse to work in food. I never will. It was my which, first job. Which, I was 16. So yeah. which do you guys think is worse? And I want there to be a heated debate. A heated because debate. Because I have some very strong thoughts. Is which there one? A question. Everyone? I'm on food service. A question. Yeah. Which, which one is worse? Which is worse? Food service. Food service, food service. or retail? Food service. Food service. I have absolutely no, there's a All reason the I don't want to work in food service. I can deal with people in retail because they are like looking for something and if they can't find it, they'll leave. When you're at a food place, they're hungry and angry. So they're hangry customers. And if they're upset, they're like rude, rude. And then they have food and it's just, and uh, nope, <laughs> too much, too much. I'm if, gonna go the other route. I'm gonna, I could not stand doing retail work. Really, why? I cannot stand just waiting around for, something to do. I hate roam, like if I had to just roam the aisles of like a large name business, um, <laughs> if I had to roam the aisles of a large name business and just wait for a customer to ask for my help and be like on comms waiting for someone to call me and ask that for help. That was always the worst that part of working retail, nuts. the earpieces, oh my God. I would much no, rather would know drama. exactly what I have to like, do. Uh, this, this customer over stealing. here, they're stealing. And yeah. we're like, oh, where? And then like three of us will go over there and be like, look at this person stealing. Yeah, and we can't do anything about it. <laughs> we can't do anything. We just got to watch them. Just um, go up and whack them with like a wiffle ball bat. We can't do that. You just gonna be like, mm, nice blue sweater I saw you put in your jacket. Yeah, it's like, like hey, um, are you finding everything okay? Because I've seen you look up and around here. Is there anything like specific you're trying to find? Like the best way that they said to go about it was like, scare them away with how good our customer service yeah. is. Wait, really? Yeah. yeah. Like I'm they would, because we can't like day. actually tell them that they're stealing. We can be like, hey, you're stealing, because that's against the rules for our contract or whatever. That's a loss prevention's like role. But we'd have to be like, go and make sure they don't leave. So we have to go and like get talk to them, but that's always the like. Oh, what do you know? Someone steals nothing. Wait, speaking of though, that I had a manager who like from the, another store that I was working at. Someone got caught stealing, and they like ran out to them. It was like chasing them down. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, get, get the stuff back. And then I think they stopped working there Come shortly here. after. So like, it's real life. Like you cannot. Wow. Yeah, I think I don't know. Maybe he got a chance. There's some weird stuff that like you wouldn't expect, and I can't go too far into it just because I think it violates like HIPAA violations. But HIPAA like HIPAA violations. There, there's there's some things working specifically in like a retirement home. Like if someone needs assistance, there's very little you can do. You can get like verbal confirmation, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Like it's huh. like the first thing to do, call security because they're trained to help yeah. people. Because yeah. like if like for instance, if someone fell down, you can't help them up because there's a chance that you hurt them more. They so see. they're like very, very strict. Like if someone like if someone needs assistance, I know that you're gonna wanna help them, but the first huh. thing you have to do is go get security. So it's like, it, it's not quite the same, but like there's weird stuff like that, where it, like hmm. the first thing that you would think to do is like, oh, I must intervene here. You yeah. can't do it for legal reasons. That's crazy, wow. I didn't even but think about it. that. And yeah. they just entrust huh. that to 16 year old teenagers all the time. What, to go get security? I don't know. I to work uh, in those places. Uh, I mean, I like to an extent. Like, there is a certain amount scary. of training, but, like, that, yeah. I mean, that's anywhere, really. I know for a fact when I was job hunting when I was 16 and I was first able to go get, like, a job job, like, I was hardcore avoiding retirement homes. I did not yeah. want to do that. I didn't even think about that as an option. And I ended up in a bar. 
end up at a bar. <laughs> you have anything from Hold there? Hold on. What? Well, How did like, you end up at the bar? It was 16. The kitchen. It was okay. okay. Oh, okay. yeah. It was like a okay. local place. It was the bar. It was a kitchen. It was also a bowling alley. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Game one. Did Three you ever one. throw like a hamburger into the bowling pin thing? <laughs> No, I would do. I would want to see what happened. Like a frozen one? No. Um, <laughs> slide it. I was a prep yeah. cook, and I can tell you there was little cuts all over my hands from just the access to knives all the time. Wow. <laughs> it's also the reason I hate washing dishes now, because, oh my god. Yeah. Like, this, this is towards my argument of why food service is worse as well. Like just. Yeah, no, I couldn't imagine. I hate washing dishes, like, in my own house. I couldn't imagine having to wash someone else's gross, wet food dishes. I, uh, Absolutely not. I threw my brother under the bus once. Um, so my... my not under a little bus. I had a, uh, my first job <laughs> was not. at a breakfast restaurant, local breakfast restaurant. And um, the dishwasher there was like, one day he was like really overloaded, something like that. And my boss at the time pulled me off the, cause I was like busing or being a host, like barista type work doing, making like coffee, espresso drinks, yeah. fancy drinks, or I was busing. I don't remember when this happened. Uh, my brother worked there. He was like only busing at this time. Um, and my boss pulled me back. He's like, hey, like, we're really backed up in dish. Can you help this guy out? And I was like, no. <laughs> no. I won't do that. The, I like, will not. This is, this is disgusting. Like, the way that he, the way, the <laughs> way that the dishwasher ran it was, like, like genuinely, they probably should have been shut down. It was atrocious. Oh, wow. um, it wasn't always like this, but that particular day, it was so backed up. There was like trash, like border, like like not overflowing quite yet, but like keeping up. Yeah, and my brother, I was, I like went out and talked to him. Like your literal brother? Yeah, like, my actual, bro, my actual the brother dishes. worked at the same blood. place as me, and I, I walked out to him. I was like, I need a favor. That's crazy. And that's not the only time I did that. <laughs> the, when I first right started out. there, because I, I started as a busboy, and I said there are two things I will never clean, and that is um, human. Species. Vom or, you know. <laughs> I said, I'll never clean those two things. And there was one day some kid threw up in one of the rooms. And oh. I was told to go do it. And I said, I'm sorry, I just can't do that. Yeah, absolutely I not. simply can't do that. If you make me do that, I will go home. And I talked to my I said, Put your foot down. I need a favor. That's so real, though. Dude, I, I, wish I, had the, I wish I had the guts to put my foot down when I had to clean up stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. I wouldn't always look. Yeah, you to, put kids in a pool, and guess what happens? Oh, no. Oh. Yep. Yeah, no, um, that's, no. Yep. Um, no, no thank you. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, What's a job that you guys would absolutely never want to have? Oh. Not um, just like, like unskilled labor, but just like in general. You know those people who go underwater and they like do the oil stuff? And oh they like do gosh, yeah. like uh, engineering under there? Yeah. Apparently it's like super hard, but you get paid a lot of money. But your lifespan uh, is cut like so small because of it. Mm -hmm. I would I, never want to yeah. do that. I'd, no, I'd, I, I wouldn't want to do the thing where like people have to climb those really high. Things yeah. to like change something or other. Uh, I like, uh, was yeah. friends with a guy who now does um, he does repairs on wind turbines. That's oh so he climbs gosh. up this like ladder oh my God, that goes not. up like 150 feet and then is in this little tiny box with this huge motor that's spinning. Mm -hmm. Super claustrophobic, but yeah, same thing. Gets paid a yeah. lot of money to do it. I can speak from experience, like climbing on top of tall things like that. I can do it, but I would be lying if I said my hands weren't shaking a little yeah. bit. That's um, honestly so brave, though. Yeah, just had I to do that not. over fall break, actually. Um, what? Um, told you what my dad does already. I climbed on top of a grain bin. Whoa. Yeah, and then I jumped inside yeah. and I was like swimming in corn. It was great. <laughs> you jumped inside the grain bin. Isn't it like super dangerous? That's um, a specifically like if you're trying to like get grain out of there. But this was like you got to even it out in order to. Yeah, that's only if it's. It blows on. up air from the bottom in order to keep it all dry. Because if it gets wet, it rots and you can't sell it because it's food, you know. Yeah. And you got to like flatten it out so the air is evenly distributed in there, and y you got to do that by hand. Yeah. Fair. I thought it was like super dangerous. No, I just that. did that like a few weeks ago. Um, I have my I've, respect for you just went up by like a, a I was gonna lot. Say, I, I don't think that <laughs> oh it's God. inherently dangerous if you're just like in there. It's, it, like you said, it's if they're trying to get it out where it's the feeder is going down. Yeah, you get it, sucked and, into it like quicksand. Yeah, and then also like when, you, when you're taking stuff out, it does leave the potential for like empty pockets to be formed. But that's again, if you're pulling it out, if you're currently putting stuff in or if you just leave it in, it's fine. Huh. Yeah. Fact. I will never do it, but it's good to know, I, I guess. That like fun. It is fun, but you get well, a lot of corn in your shoes and your clothes. Corn in your yeah. shoes. Everywhere. Don't get corn in your shoes. It's well, a I life think, lesson I think everyone should listen to. I think that's just about all the time that we have. Uh, I, wow, I botched that yeah, outro. Take it away. <laughs> that's all the time we have for today. Thank that. you so much for tuning in. Um, next week, we're going to be doing more talking with more people as we do every week. Um, and we're here with some great people. Who are you? Natalie. And who are you? And I'm Kayla. I'm Sam. And I'm Thomas. This is Friendly Fire. We'll see you guys.
next week. You're Credit, fired! Credits. 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 Credits.